Okay. Hi, my name is Shane Wong, and this is our presentation of learning. So, well, first, if you're, if you're a huge Marvel fan, and since this, this is superhero themed, you'll, you'll notice some references. Okay, so my, my superhero is Punny, it's Telekinese Shuo. If you, if you, if you probably already know that my kind of, I go by the nickname Shuo, because my first two letters of my first and last name, and then Telekinese. Okay, so my first villain is the Cutthroat Killer. Uh, his objective is to turn people against you and not want to work for you. So in order for me to figure out to defeat this villain, I had to use, harness the power of collaboration. So using collaboration to overcome the killer, we had to agree on food, such as like if we were missing some things, we had to improvise. Uh, and that also goes into alternate our recipe because if we messed up on green things or if we didn't have enough things to grow to use for a recipe, then we could have to alter our recipe to make it taste the same but different. So, and also collaborating, collaborating during stressful times, like down to the wire, like plating, we were very stressed out about getting the plate all all nice and clean, so we had to, we were able to collaborate on what we're doing so everything will look the same and it will all look nice at the same time. And also having a positive, and also having positive conversations with each other while doing our dish, because I remember when Chef Matt told us that you, in the kitchen, everybody isn't always all positive. We strive, our group strive to be all positive and try to not put people down and get along. Oh. Yeah, okay. So, our second villain is Dr. Presume. So, Dr. Presume wants you to believe in the information that is false. So, in order to defeat him, I had to use the power of critical thinking. So, critical thinking. In order to defeat Dr. Presume, I have to have an open mind. In the book Animal Farm, it was about animals on a farm, and it was an allegory to the Russian Revolution. There was, there was practically a cover-up of, of the events that happened in the Revolution, and at first I didn't think that the book was anything about that, but when I actually thought about it and thought of all the possible things that it could be, it was actually pretty mind-blowing. So, and also, there's always a reason why I was reading the book. So, at first, as I just said, I had no idea what animal farm was. I thought it was just animals living on a farm doing their everyday things. But when I, ha I had to link, I had to link animal farm to what we were doing in our class, which is the Re Russian Revolution. So I could have, if I had to make an inference about what, about what Animal Farm is and why we're actually reading this. So, my uh, third villain is Dr. Reality. Dr. Reality convinces citizens to think rationally and, and end their big plans of imagining things. So in order to counter Dr. Reality, I have to use my imagination. So, so, in, so my Dr. Reality was defeated by innovation and imagination, so thinking outside of the box. Going back to my Animal Farm reference, how I never thought that it was, how I never thought that it was ever going to be about the Russian Revolution, well it was. And then linking past and present events, like in the book Animal Farm, it was about, about the, when, I think it was, when the Battle of the Windmill, and then they were all fighting, and everything was all all destroyed, and everything that simulated stuff that happened in the Russian Revolution. Okay, and then my fourth villain is the bringer of rain and failure. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the rigor rent failure could change the situation at any time. Anything could happen when it was going up against it. So what I did was I used the power of adaptability. So what I did was how to triumph over him was adapt to the situation, obviously. In the picture right here, we were in Home Depot and we were shopping for parts for like our first time when we were making our system. It was all a new it was all a new like a new beginning for our whole group because we didn't know where much things were and and we were scrambling around so we could check out first and not have to be in the line for the credit card. Um, in this picture, we, we pre-planned what we were going to do during the cooking competition, so if there was something that went wrong, we could always have a backup plan. We had many backup plans, so like if somebody was, let's say, one of our teammates were like cut, we, we were, had to double up on one of, our, one of his jobs, and in order to finish it, we had to, we had to adapt to what anything could happen. And my fifth and final villain is Captain Procrastination. He's been in many, many, many superheroes and superhero keynotes and projects. <laughs> he's shown up in why he's made his he's made his appearance. So he convinces his, his adversary to wait till the last minute and ha just have an overall bad time. Uh, and in order for me to conquer the villain, I had to use the power of time management. So, time management, what I did to conquer him. So, we had to create a schedule for the stuff that we had to finish for each day. I'm talking about the work days. So, when our teachers figured out that sometimes we were slacking off most of the time, uh, they made us have a plan sheet so we could have set goals for what we want to achieve for that day. So, we could get everything that we had to be done and we could be we can be ahead of people and maybe even finish it before. Uh, and planning ahead because that also ties in with anticipation because mm, because um, let's just say one of our one of our, oh yeah, so our sawhorse, when we were in our building, our sawhorse broke and when we were when we, we were taking it down to the pen, so we ended up just like leaving it there all in pieces. Um, so we only figured out that that was actually a pretty bad thing. So we had to plan ahead and because we already pretty much knew that our system was a failure, but we had to, we planned ahead and ran through different scenarios that we thought that might happen, which did happen. So we we switched up our design and made it so it would work. Shane, what do you think the biggest difference is in you between, let's say, last semester's POL and this POL? Um, one, I'm 100% more confident in speaking. Totally. Uh, I think I've said the word um at least like five times, or more, or less, I hope less. I wasn't counting, <laughs> but who's counting? Um, and then, I don't know, I just, I like the superhero theme because it's like a huge Marvel fanboy right here, so. <laughs> um, that, no, definitely, I was gonna, I, I'm glad that you said that because you seem so much more confident, you've really grown as a public speaker this semester, so good job. Thank you, Shane.